Justin Trudeau's Liberals have won a majority government. The morning after the night before, in the dawn of a new Liberal landscape, Canadians woke to a political reality that is as urban as a hipster cafe in downtown Toronto can get. For me, it was mostly just that I felt the city and Canada in general needed a change. The city has spoken, or the country has spoken, right? A country of cities certainly has spoken. The urban dynamics so central in this campaign swept the Liberals to power on the promise these crowded metropolitans matter. Seven out of ten Canadians now live in cities, delivering a vote for change and an expectation this time the feds will deliver too. I think that uh, you'll see a, a renaissance, a real golden age of cities on the horizon if we can make sure that uh, that uh, campaign promise is fulfilled to every last word, every last dollar. From city council to liberal MP, Adam Vaughan campaigned on the street cred of a longtime urban activist Congratulations. and a commitment to put tens of billions of dollars into practice. Cities are where it's at in this country. We're the most urbanized country in the G7. If we get cities right, we have the capacity and the wealth to reinvest to make sure that, uh, that the traditional and more remote parts of this country also thrive. A politically astute platform based on issues like transportation that Canadian mayors made very hard to ignore. The political push was unprecedented. Big and small city mayors banded together to lobby for better infrastructure, more affordable housing and transit that moves way faster. Next stop, Simcoe Street. Hard to find a streetcar full of commuters in Toronto who didn't back that. I think that any party that's going to be in power uh, has to address the issue of transportation. Look at all the people on this crowded streetcar right now and it's only going to get worse through rush hours so there's a demand and a need for more transit. In many ways, experts say, it was a perfect political storm. Canadians want to change. Cities are having their moment, flexing their political and economic muscle. Canada's five largest cities produce 50% of the country's GDP. Is this a new era for cities? Well, I hope it's a new era for cities. You know, there's no way we're going to build a strong economic future, rebuild our middle class, be innovative and productive without the strongest cities we can have. Richard Florida is a world expert on cities. He says dense metropolitan centers create innovation and growth, as do the increasingly urbanized suburbs linked to them. Human capital that needs to flow to keep the economy moving. That's that new constituency. That's the new emerging liberal majority, if you will. And I think making good on that, it's not a debt. I wouldn't say it's a debt. I would say it's an investment in the future. It's an investment in a political coalition and a political future. But much more importantly, as a Canadian, it's a much better investment in the future of Canada's economy, which really is at this tipping point. <laughs> A sentiment that echoes back with the cappuccino crowd. I think that that's why some of the cities kind of got, you know, taken over because I think that a lot of people were saying, okay, enough is enough and Canada needs things to be changed. And if not everything was being changed prior, I think that this was the opportunity to take it. I mean, it had been almost 10 years, so I think it's about time that people were ready for that change. And I think that vote came in just on time. At the right time and the right place to build on a new construct of where the future lies. Joanna Rumeliotis, CBC News, Toronto.